Crouch and Starfield. 1983. Where they show that if you have a fracture that's a fixed height and you evaluate on grid centers, like we're doing, right? So these dots represent that same line segment up there, okay? And now we're going to introduce some new notation that says that basically for every cell, for every ith cell, okay, so this is this point right here we're going to call, that, that has spatial, spatial position x, ci, and y, ci. c meaning center, okay? So the center of the ith cell. Center of the ith cell. Then we're going to evaluate at the four corners of that cell, and we know where they are. If we know where the center is, we know where the four corners are because it's a fixed height, and this is at the center. And then we, know, we also know delta x, okay? But this following their notation, which I don't love, but I don't know that I could come up with anything more clever. So they're going to say, just like if this is x ci, then they're going to say that this point right here is x on the left side of i, and this is x on the right side of i. So let me make one more cell here. So then some other cell is going to be, we're going to use the indice K. So this is XCK, comma, XC, I'm sorry, YC. K. Right. So K just means not the ith, right? So this would also be k, you know, k equals one, k equals two, k equals three. So it's the other ones. Yeah. Here? R. Left, right. Okay. Yeah, left, right. And so the same thing here. There's a x, l, k, x, r, k. And then the y values are the same, right? So then y at the bottom of i is equal to y at the bottom of k. And y at the top of i is equal to y at the top of k, because it's a fixed height fracture. All right. So if you remember, again, remember that equation was like, f x y is equal to the double integral over the surfaces of f of x y x prime y prime p x prime y prime d x prime d y prime so the primes are dummy variables of integration right? but this is for a continuous body a continuous fracture when we discretize it, when we discretize it, then you can sort of think of the x and the y are the i's, and the dummy variables, the primes, are the k's. So you can think of it in a discrete form. In discrete form, this becomes, you know, something like sum over. It, this is in. This is in 2D, right? This is in 2D, because we're having a fixed height, uh, and one of the integrals goes away, right? It's a, it's a constant height. So then you just have one v dummy variable of integration, sort of. 
And so then it just becomes uh, like a sum over k uh, f of xi, yi, xk, yk times p x uh, k yk okay so anyway what these guys Crouch and Starfield did though was they they were able to analytically sort of invert this relationship and solve for the pressure in terms of some sort of the inverse of this thing times the width. And they showed that what the, what the final equation would be that P at xi is equal to the sum over k of aik wk, where aik is a matrix a k is equal to g for g b in the shear modulus we already have a mu right? 4 pi 1 minus mu that's the Poisson ratio times i which is a function of x c i y c i X I K Y I'm sorry X L K Y L K X R K Y R K Y's should be T's and B's, top and bottom. So in words, it's not near as complicated. <laughs> I mean, in words, this influence function is a function of the centers of the cells in the corners. Right? But, the, but the key thing to note here, and this is, this is typical of all boundary element methods, which is what this is, is that this is a completely dense non-local solution. In other words, normally like in a finite difference scheme, right? In a finite difference scheme, I can solve for the pressure here just by knowing its neighbor's pressure. Right? I mean, that's what we're doing in the fluid mechanics. Right? This represents the, re the response of the elastic solid, okay? And this, the solution of this is saying that the, the width there, the pressure there, associated with any width change is a function of everything else. So it's a function of all of these points and all of their corners. So it's a completely dense non-local solution. Right, so that matrix A I K is, com is completely dense. Whereas you know, like in a finite difference or finite element scheme, you, you have some banded structure. Right. Okay. So then the last thing is I have to tell you what I is. Um, So then I is equal to X C I minus X R K squared
sur toi, Seigneur. Turn. So that's what I is. And it's sort of a pain to compute, right? But if you notice, it's just a function of the pos spatial positions of the grid points that you choose at the beginning. So you only have to do it once at the, at the beginning of the calculation. So my plan is next week to sort of help you guys do this part. Well, you know, sort of live code it in class or whatever. But now, so remember, this, this was just P at XI equals to A, the sum of A, I, K, uh, W, K, right? And a lot of times we just leave off this sum. So this is Einstein notation. So if you see repeated indices, and so if you see two k's there, then that's, that implies the sum. Okay. So now, finally, go back in, into our equation minus 1 over 12 mu, the width i plus 1 cubed minus the width of i minus 1 cubed over 2 delta x times our p at i plus 1 is a i plus 1 k WK plus, I'm sorry, minus A I minus one K WK two delta X plus the width cubed and I times A I plus one K W K minus two A I K W K plus a I K plus A I minus one K W K Delta X squared all of that plus W I N plus one minus E I of N. Okay. We have one equation and one unknown. W.
Unfortunately, you know, if you took reservoir simulation, we, the equations were always linear. And so you could pull out all the Ws and then you have some big matrix times a bunch of unknowns and you solve a linear equation. But we have pesky W cubes in there. In fact, we have W to the fourth power in this term, right? So we multiply that W cube through maybe not. Get the non-local. Anyway, the point is it's nonlinear. And so you, you can't just solve a linear equation. You have to basically use the Newton Raphson method to solve it. And so we'll talk about how to do that next time. And we'll start to work towards you know, coding it up. So the idea here uh, would be that, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll discretize in space. You know, we'll choose a fixed height fraction. And we'll discretize in space for a length much longer than what we expect the fracture to grow. Okay? And then we'll inject fluid. And what we'll do is that everywhere, uh, you know, basically we'll, 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 we'll have some initial fraction. Okay? And everywhere else, even though the, even though the discretized, there's a discretization there, we'll force the width to be 0. So when the solution of these equations, we'll just set the w to be 0. And therefore, the pressure will be zero, right? And then in the in the in the other grid cells that, that the width is forced to be zero, we'll compute the width distribution across the grid. Then we can, with that, if we know the width, we can use the displacement discontinuities to determine the fracture toughness. And then from the fracture toughness, we can determine if that's going to if the fracture is going to grow or not. If it is going to grow, we'll then open up a cell. We'll let that, you know, where we were forcing it to be zero before, we'll, we'll let it now be an active cell, if you will, and solve for the width in that one. And of course, this will only be an accurate method in the limit of the grid cells going to zero, you know, as they shrink to zero. Um, but hopefully, you know, so I think if we don't have class Monday, then I think there's four classes, four actual classes saving the last class day for, as a review for the test. So I think you know, we'll just make this a focus, sort of. I'll, I'll assign a homework next week, but we'll sort of, I'll hold your hand through it in class. We'll sort of work little pieces of it. And, and then in the end, what I'd like you to do, you know, the part you will absolutely do on your own would be to take this code that we're going to write partially in class and work on, uh, and then compare that to a KGD solution for the same fixed height fracture. Anyway, okay.